What's going on there folks? Good evening. It's the Earthmaster here on this Thursday night, August 4th, 2022 date, about 8.08 p.m. California time. The uh, latest quake looks like a 1.7 earthquake here around the California region just showing up there on the earthquake 3D globe. All right, what do we got going on out here besides earthquakes? We got uh, quite a few members here to welcome real quick. Nancy Maria Park, John Didier, uh, Debash Mode, Joel Koloski, Alicia Stanford, Mike De De Delaney, uh, Melanie Fisher, and it looks like uh, Catherine Decker, Pamela uh, Colney, Ray, Hope and Feathers, Robert, Robert, there's two Roberts there, The Fly Lady, Jay Fuentes, 347, Albert Sanchez Jr., uh, and Dolores, thank you very much for becoming members of the channel. You guys are automatically entered into a $40 uh, Amazon gift card giveaway here this month. Last month, it was uh, Robert Kozowski won a $50 Visa gift card. We kind of mix it up a little bit each month. What do we got for earthquake activity? Well, the latest quake up here around the Solomon Islands, a 5.1 striking in at 111 kilometers somewhat of a moderate size earthquake we haven't seen too much activity here around the region in quite some time uh, looking at some deeper movement though around the fiji islands area and eastward checking up on the swarm out here around japan it's still ongoing although nothing within the last hour this is the last 24 hours of earthquake activity about 17 earthquakes of moderate magnitude into the Izu Trench just south of the Tokyo region just south of uh, Japan this area is very capable of producing a rather large earthquake it's in a quiet zone uh, far as historical data goes so we're looking at possibly seeing a much larger movement magnitude earthquake in this region here very soon uh, eastward as we go into the states, there's an earthquake there, 2.9 along, it look, kind of looks like it's along the San Andreas Fault. A 2.9 northwest of Kalinga. And uh, a little bit closer inspection shows that it is on the creeping section of the San Andreas Fault, 2.9. San Lucas, California, 6.6 .6 kilometers below the surface there. Let's bring up the all magnitudes here real quick. See what we got. Not a whole lot of renewed movement down south or throughout the rest of California uh, far as that activity goes. Include the Pacific Northwest. Things kind of just on a minimal scale. We did have some activity out here around the Black Diamond Washington region at 3.1 at 21 kilometers. Seeing a little aftershock activity as well. A little, little 1.0 so look at this real quick folks i'm going to show you guys real quick the trimmer map tonight trimmer map is a little bit more amplified into the pacific northwest more specifically around the uh outside of the juan de fuca strait here north of seattle and areas in the northern california we've seen about 204 epicenters of trimmer into this area of the Cascadia tonight. Now, I think a lot of this activity that we're seeing um, just to the south of Seattle, even though it's deep, it's about 21 kilometers deep, I think it's got to do with the subduction zone itself, uh, meaning the trimmer activity here down dip downstream. It does add crustal stress as we shove that Juan de Fuca plate underneath the North American plate. Of course, you gotta remember what's it gonna do, right? It's not only gonna feel the volcanoes possibly through the, uh, throughout the Cascades, but also um, put a lot of strain on the crustal surface areas uh, throughout the Pacific Northwest. And I think that's kind of what we're seeing there south of Seattle today. Movement, Western Texas, a little activity throughout the day today. No major quakes though, uh, far as the Eastern part of the country goes. Looking at the South America region down into the Peru-Chile Trench. We got one earthquake, a 4.1. Uh, 
Well, th this earthquake here is pretty deep, about 113 kilometers way down there into the Peru Chile Trench. Uh, pretty good subduction zone earthquake, although things look fairly quiet for the most part throughout the South America region, except for that activity. Into the Alaska region, very typical movement. Uh, not a whole lot of um, large scale activity. In fact, only two earthquakes being recorded up there. Actually, one, if you want to. Uh, no, we'll count two. We'll count these two right here 2.7 and a 3.1. One around the Cook Inlet. Uh, pretty deep earthquake out here into the subduction zone of the Pacific and the North American plate there. So. Uh, but westward, look at that. Not a whole lot of activity as you scoot westward here throughout the Mediterranean, Middle East, or the African region. Of course, there is Af uh, there's obviously activity, but nothing above the 4.0 threshold as far as large-scale movement is concerned. Uh, Yellowstone National Park, not a whole lot going on throughout the uh, board here. Things pretty calm and minimal as far as earthquake activity goes. And we're going to pull up the EMSC model here real quick. And we'll take a look at the uh, latest data. Far as a different agency goes, I do like to check these guys out. Um, along with the USGS, just to verify data. So there's uh, twos and threes, quite a bit of them throughout the Peru uh, Chile Trench and up along the Middle America Trench. But uh, no large scale activity kicking up here for now. And we've seen most of the activity throughout the map here uh, consistent with the USGS uh, in that astro uh, in, 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 in that movement as well. So uh, no difference in terms of uh, the agencies for now. Uh, let's check out the solar weather department. I got to make this short because I have a tri-tip and about four chicken thigh oh, four chicken quarters, I should say on the barbecue right now. Uh, activity looking somewhat active, of course, along the coronal hole act, uh, movement. This is an older image here from August 3rd. Um, actually, if you look at this, this is actually from the 2nd. So they're having a little issue here along the solarham.net uh, website. This is very old data, so a lot of this is not consistent with newer photographs being observed from the SDO observatory but we're watching it uh, you know far as the data goes any major flaring going on there's not a whole lot no major coronal holes that are facing us currently and it uh, doesn't look like we're expecting anything in the days to come um, for now so um, again um, we are um, looking at the possibility on this earthquake 3d globe here with the consistent swarming off the coast of japan of possibly something bigger brewing in that area um, unless something changes this is very similar to uh the west coast here okay we talk about the teeter-totter effect a lot when things are active here along the western coast the eastern pacific things tend to die down here along the western pacific out here along the uh, western pacific ring of fire and vice versa if you can take that into account so for example here around the japan region if we see some major adjustment major adjustment westward um or or perhaps northward it could leniently provide some stress or at least uh, a release of stress here along the japan region but i think we need to watch this area pretty closely for some larger scale movement along the izu trench and the mariana trench area we did see a 5.1 up here again um around the um pacific ring of fire down south potentially adding a little bit of stress uh further or a release release of stress i should say uh, within this area along the eastern part of the Pacific Plate. That includes the west coast. Movement to the west indicates a little bit of release, release here around the eastern Pacific. But um, still a little scattered. I mean, I'm still a little uncertain on to what is about to happen here. 
Um, I still think we have the possibility of some further large scale activity in the Japan region. We need to watch that pretty closely um, over the coming hours and days considering that uh, large scale swarm movement kicking off there. So, All right, guys. Um, have a good night. Again, um, if you're not a member of the channel, I highly recommend that you do if you want to be entered into a pretty cool drawing. Even if you want to go in for a month. Even if you want to uh, be a member just for a month to see what it's like. You get some behind uh, behind the scenes uh, video and also some uh, just some activity around the house here. Some gardening and whatnot here me and Missy Mimi's have, have here on the, uh, the farm. The Earth Master Farm so to speak. And also uh, you get entered into a pretty awesome drawing each month. Every month is a new drawing. Robert Kozowski won a $50 Visa gift card last month for being a super fan member. Are you next? That's a question. Is it worth it? I think it's I think it's worth it. Um, you get some cool emojis and some uh, icons and whatnot. We are kind of in the uh, experimental mode. We're kind of just advancing uh, from here on out. We're not super set up in terms of icons and whatnot, uh, but uh, we are going to hopefully get that uh, going pretty soon in terms of some further icons and emojis and whatnot. But uh, hey, the drawing is held live every month. Again, a uh, $40 Amazon gift card up for grabs this month if you are a super fan. You have to be a super fan, folks. If you're not, you got to wait wait for the 100,000 subscriber giveaway here coming up, I'm sure by the end of the year or possibly the uh beginning of 2023, we'll see how it plays out, but either way, this channel is all about giving back to the subscribers, the community and whatnot. We try not to take from you guys. It's not this channel's not about taking from you guys. Uh it's more or less about providing factual information to the community on a large scale basis and providing some fun gifts for those that like to uh, win some certain prizes out there. So have a good night, folks. I'm going to go. I, man, I better go check on my barbecue. Peace out, guys.